For the upper jaw, we start out similar to how we did the lower jaw. Here's our one piece that we have marked for the uh, holes that will, the teeth will go in. And then here's one of the inner jaw pieces. And uh, flipping it over, I've blackened the edges with ink so that I'll be able to get this inner jaw piece centered. Now here we don't have to worry about any overrun. If there's a little bit of overrun, uh, we can just cut it off even at the ends. We don't have to hold it back anything or s like we did for the uh, lower jaw. So I'll just use some glue and get that uh, centered there and put in place and then use my crop -a dial to again punch 1 8 inch holes in there. So here's my upper jaw piece and I have the holes all punched here and now I'm ready to add some decorative paper. I'm going to use this same striped paper that I did for the lower jaw and I'll glue this on here and when I do that I'm going to leave about oh, a half an inch here on either end. I'm not sure that we'll need that, but just I uh, just want to be a little bit safe about that. So I'll glue this on and again I'll cut borders that are about 3 eighths of an inch around uh, each side. So I'll get that accomplished and then I'll be back. So now I have my decorative paper attached. I've repunched my holes through there so they're all set and now we're ready to take one of our pieces of uh, the out the outs actually is the outside upper jaw and this piece will wrap around and go in that channel and since it's 3 8 inch all the way around you can just start it even with one corner wrap it around and then eventually we'll trim it off at the other end. So go ahead and put that on and allow it to dry and I'd allow it to dry before I trimmed it off. Now while the glue is setting up on that piece we can go ahead and assemble our the other part of the upper jaw I've again blackened it here and then I'll just glue this on and trim and if there's any excess at the end on the inner piece I'll trim that off uh, even with the outer piece. So I'll go ahead and get these two pieces glued up. And now that my outer piece here is set up. I can go ahead and trim that off even with the end. And then I'll run a bead of glue on the outside of this piece and put it on here. And then we can complete this part by running our two beads of glue along those channels and putting the inside upper jaw in. Again, it will be a little bit long, so just start it even with one end so that you can trim it off once it's thoroughly dry. Now that everything is dry, we can wrap our decorative paper to the inside here. I think you can see I've cut out a little notch on the inside. So it's even with the edge of the jaw and then just a little square cut out. And then I've cut little slits every 3 16 of an inch and I'll just use some wet glue to attach those tabs to the inside of the jaw. Then once our glue has dried on these tabs and it's uh, thoroughly dry, we can finish off the inside here. This is a half inch piece 
of that same um, orange shell paper I used on the inside of the lower jaw and when we put this on it's okay if it comes a little bit higher than this bottom edge here uh, that won't matter so just uh, install it even with one end and then cut it off when you get to the other end. So there is the inside of the upper jaw finished off. So now we need to look at the head piece here and you may recall that I said when we were looking at the templates that we would do some scoring and I don't know if you can tell that I've accomplished that. I scored every eighth of an inch uh, using my scoreboard in between these two points here. So uh, perpendicular to this line. And then I uh, used my smallest die from the Tim Holtz shaped circle set. It's an inch and a quarter and I uh, cut out the two eye sockets. This one I was off just a little bit but I don't think it matters so I'm not going to get concerned about that. And now I want to cover it with some paper and I also, this is the side I'm going to put paper on, so I want to make sure that I transfer the center markings to the, to the back side so that I'll have those uh, ready to go. And then this is the paper that I'm going to use. We have to put it on kind of an angle. This is the side that will show. And uh, I'm going to cut it even with the bottom edge and then I will leave a half an inch tab around the top. Now over here on this side I don't have quite enough paper to do that so I'm just going to uh, join another little piece of the scrap from up here uh, to this section so that I'll have a, a, a my full one half inch tab on that side. So I'll get that attached and then I'll be back. So here's my head and I have left the half inch tab all along the up, upper edge here and cut out for the two eyes and now I'll just kind of gently make sure it wants to curve on all those score lines that we made there. You want to be gentle especially around the eye holes here but it's a pretty gentle curve so even though that paper was cut to the same size, it is possible to uh, get it to curve. And once you have it shaped, then we've got our long uh, center line there that matches up with this center line on the upper jaw and we'll glue that right along that edge there. so that it fits right down against that paper there. So I'll go ahead and put some glue on that and then allow that to thoroughly dry. Now once the glue is set up enough um, that it's staying in place for the head, we can go ahead and wrap this paper up to the top here. And in order to do that, first we're going to make a cut on the inside here of the head, right along there, and release that tab. And then we'll cut it even with the, there's a little notch right here. And then we'll have to make our little 3 16th inch slits all the way around and uh, make sure this uh, doesn't is not sticking up more than 3 8 and go ahead and glue that down, wrap it and glue that all around. So now the glue has dried on this tab and we can do a little inking there on that edge if you want. Just a little 
it to stay consistent. And now we're ready to put what I call the lip on. And that's this, um, this is lightweight chipboard. It's 5 eighths of an inch wide and it's going to wrap right along the edge of the head there like that. But we want to put some decorative paper on there first. So I'm going to use this same paper that I put on the outside of the lower jaw and I cut it an inch and a quarter wide and I'm going to center this piece on here. But what I'm going to do is just start it for a few inches here and I drew a line so I could kind of keep this roughly centered and then just uh, in case it's uh, because of the curve it's difficult I'm just going to take that piece and come along here as I wrap just so that um, if there's any you know we can we can kind of allow for the the curvature so I just remove that score tape. I'm following, I have a line on my, on the inside of this paper here that I'm just lining up with the edge of that chipboard piece. And then I can smooth it. And now I'm just going to wrap these two sides to the inside. And I probably have to make a few slits along the way. I'll put a piece of score tape on here on the inside to attach them to. And just probably make some slits every half inch or so. They don't have to be as, um, as close as the other ones were when we had to go around like this curve here. There's, there's no need. This is uh, more gentle here. So. So I'll put score tape on the inside and make those little cuts and wrap that to the inside. When you put the score tape on the inside, use two pieces of quarter inch tape. That way you can put one side down. You can see I've put one side all the way down and I've already moved, removed the backing from the other side here. But that just makes it easier um, to hold on to and uh, so you don't have any stickiness to hold on to and you're not trying to do both sides at once and that allows you to uh, keep this curve more easily. Once you have your piece covered do some inking if you want and then we'll do a little dry fit here and kind of see we don't have a center marked, but we can just kind of see where it would go for centering. And then you can decide if you want to have a little reveal of the, the, the blue of the lip there, or you want to bring it down a little bit. I think I'll have a, just a little reveal of the blue there. And I'll just use some wet glue and hold that in place there for a moment. To make the eyes, we need our circles that we uh, cut that are 1 and 3 sixteenths inch and 1 and 1 eighth. We have four of each. And what we're going to do here is on the 1 and 3 sixteenths is to put some dark ink around it so that we'll be able to put our 1 and 1 eighth inch piece on here and see that we have a little uh, reveal equal all the way around. And that's just similar to how we were doing our uh, jaw pieces. This is to allow a gluing surface for a piece of the lightweight chipboard that forms the rims of the eyes to go around. So just get that centered in there. And then here's one that you can see I've put the rim on and to do that we take one of our rim pieces and just kind of 
it's not necessary to do any scoring on this I don't think just kind of work it with your fingers a little bit so that it wants to curve and we'll have to trim this off a little bit so just start it around and work it around in that channel till you get it where it overlaps and then make a mark and cut that off. So I've cut this piece to length and then here I've got just a little piece of cardstock that's about a quarter inch by three quarters inch that I put some score tape on the back of and I'll just center that here on the end and this is just help reinforce of the join. You can see how it is on this one right there when we go around. So here we'll just put our um, glue in the channel and then add this piece around. And then once you've got that side rim on, we'll just take our other little set here, run a bead of glue around the edge there and fit it in uh, to cr create this little cylinder. So I'll do that for both of my eyes. Then to finish off the outside of the eyes, we'll cut a strip of paper that is one half inch wide by four and a quarter long and it's backed with score tape. Now I have some peacock blue cardstock that I'm using. You could also use, there's a darker blue that reads as solid in the six by six pad. You could use that as well. So. Um, what you want to do is wrap this around and it will overlap and I like to start so that I cover up my seam and I'm working flat on my work surface because this may not be exactly a half an inch tall and what we want is for the outside to be flat so if we work on our work surface to do this we're assured of having one um, surface that is flat against the uh, the eye and then when I get to the end I pick it up and just look at it to make sure I get that end aligned there. Now the inside where on mine I just have a hair overlapping that's not going to show but you might uh, this will probably get covered up here, but I'll, I think I'll do just a little inking on this top edge and burnish, of course. And uh, then I'll just set these aside for a moment. Now to make the outside of the eyes, I've started out with four pieces of lightweight chipboard that I cut um, two and three quarter inches square. And I drew a line on each one so that I know which way they're flexible because I'm going to want to stack these eventually and I want to get them oriented the same way. So I put that line on one side and then on the other side, on two of them I have uh, decorative paper. I'm using the shells and on two uh, I have the uh, peacock blue cardstock, but again you could use a um, the piece that reads as solid, the darker blue in the 6x6 six six pad if you don't have peacock blue. Hardly any of this will, will show. Um, and then for the, on the decorative paper I'm going to use this die. It comes from uh, a Sizzix labels die. Tim Holtz labels and um, it's a thin lit die 
And so I've just attached the paper here with some of the Stick It product just so that I keep this uh, as, as low as possible so that I'll be able to cut this with this die. And then out of the solid blue squares, I'll just cut a simple two and a half inch circle. And I have a, a die that is that size. Um, if you don't have one, you can always uh, draw it and cut it out, or also, or also, you could use the um, EK uh, Success circle cutter that we were using when we cut the circles for the eyes. So I'll get those cuts made, and then I'll be back to talk about the next step. Once you have your pieces cut out, do whatever inking you might want to do around them, and then turn them over. And we want to layer them and keep those lines straight. So I'm just uh, keeping using a line on my mat here. And then I'll make a, a ring of glue here. We don't really need any in the middle because we'll be cutting the middle out. And then just get that centered on there. and let that set up for a few minutes. Now when you go to put these uh, layers together, the lines may not line up exactly, but just make sure they're parallel to each other and then you'll have the flexibility here. So next we want to mark to cut our inch and a quarter circle. So I'm just going to use my uh, template here where I've got a a two and a half inch uh, circle and then I'll draw a line or two lines so that I can center my inch and a quarter uh, circle. And you may not be able to see them but I can see these light pencil lines there and then I can use those lines and take an uh, inch and a quarter template and line that up so that I can draw a circle right there in the center to use to guide my inch and a quarter die. And then I'll just use some um, painter's tape to hold that die in position centered there and take it and cut it on my die cutting machine and repeat that process for my other eye circle. So after you have the circles cut out, I did a little inking on mine and then I'm just going to give them a little curvature kind of parallel to that line that's on the back there because we want to have some nice gluing surface to attach this. So just keep uh, working at it gently until it's curving enough so that you have a nice flat gluing surface and then center the cir cut out circle on the eye with that circle that's on the head and glue that on. Now that our circles are dry, let's just do a little test fit of our eyes and we'll want the seam of the uh, cardstock or paper to go towards the lip here. And you may need to press down on this a little bit just to flatten it out to get it to go in, but it should go in um, fairly easily. And when we glue it in here, we'll want about a half of it to be on the inside and about a half to be on the outside. So just run a bead of glue around the edge here and then pop that in so that it is uh, situated halfway. And then repeat that for the other eye. So after I put the eyes in, I just ran a little bead of glue around the inside and uh, we'll let that set up and that should keep those eyes in there securely.
So now that our eyes are in, let's um, measure and mark for our quarter inch hole. And it goes on the center line. And I've just marked a line 3 8 of an inch down from the top of the chipboard here. And then this is our piece of medium weight chipboard that we're going to use to support the back of the head. And when we glue this in, we want to keep it a sixteenth of an inch back from the edge of the chipboard here. And you can just use a little scrap piece to help you judge that. And make sure you get the center mark aligned and work your way slowly keeping that sixteenth of an inch until you have this piece uh, installed. So I have that piece installed and I've just got some clothes pins on there to make sure it stays in the proper place while it sets up and dries. And now that this strip is dry I'll use my quarter inch punch and put that crosshair that we drew here um, and punch a hole. It will come into the support piece that we've got on there. So, well, probably about a sixteenth of an inch or so. So just get that lined up. Take your time and get it lined up and go ahead and punch that hole. <laughs> 